All right, what's up guys? What's growing on? So I'm still here at heart. I'm gonna make you another epic video with Josh and this is gonna be one of our kind of staple crops, easiest to grow root crops we have here in Florida. Um, I actually just recently got some epic varieties from Josh. Actually, there's a new Togo variety out of the five or six varieties of cassava he grows, he says is the best. I've got a bunch of extra cuttings of that one actually available. I'm gonna put it up on the website. So if you guys wanna get your hands on that, check it out. Links will be in the description down below. Let's check this crop out. Whoa! Hey. Hey, you again. Yep. So we've got some uh, cassava here. This is the very last of the plants for the season. Most of this was harvested starting in November. It's April right now. So this has been left in the ground through the winter. Um, so yeah, cassava is probably our number one easiest calorie type crop to grow in Florida. The four main starchy root crops of the world are sweet potato, taro, cassava, and true yams. And uh, of those four, cassava is the most reliable uh, yielder here in our area. Um, sweet potatoes, kind of variable. Yams are a lot of work to build the trellises, and taro needs really improved soil conditions. Cassava, on the other hand, can grow in really poor conditions and still give a lot of food, and you don't really need to do a whole lot. So uh, it's a woody plant. This is all grown. This growth all happened in about nine or 10 months from planting. So it's a very fast growing woody plant. It's native to the uh, Amazon region of South America where it was domesticated. And it's a starchy, dense uh, root that you eat, that's eaten as a staple around the world. Southeast Asia, Africa, and where it's native, C Central and South America, it's a huge food. Um, there's lots of different varieties, lots of different ways of growing it. Um, one thing that's kind of cool about it is that in the tropics, it's not tied to the seasons at all. It can be kind of planted and harvested whenever, as long as there's adequate rainfall. Some of the other root crops are not quite um, that way. So this variety is um, not my favorite eating variety, but what makes this one unique is its, uh, its growth habit. So see how tall this is? It must be 11 or 12 feet tall. Um, and that makes this one very, uh, it integrates really well with tree crops because it's up and out of the way. And I can still uh, fit the mower in beside it and then the, the other orchard crops. Like right here is a persimmon tree. Right there is a che tree. And uh, this, this thing goes straight up and out of the way. Other varieties grow a lot wider I actually prefer the wider growth because the one big issue is they blow over in the wind. This variety is more prone to blowing over in the wind, but uh, in this case it, we have to use it because it fits good. Now what I did do is I, I drive in bamboo and I had bamboo pieces holding this up to keep it from blowing over. Otherwise they, they do blow over really bad. I'll show you how we, I'll do a quick harvest. So first thing you do is Cut this down. This particular thing is a big, tall piece. And uh, it's propagated by cuttings, so we could save all this if we wanted to. In fact, the best cuttings are the sticker, woody type growth. So I have been setting that stuff aside. So when I'm harvesting, I'll keep this in case somebody wants to plant this one. It helps to have a nice thick machete. This is a uh, Filipino machete. It's really heavy gauge steel. And uh, they go cut through these. So I'll show you real quick, if I were to uh, collect a cutting, how I would do that. I, I actually like to use a, uh, a saw, because it makes nice clean cuts. And what I'm after, these are, these are nodes, and there's dormant buds hiding in there. So new growth comes out of those. These are old leaf scars where there was a leaf attached. Um, 
most of the tubers emanate from these, these node points. So the more of those nodes you bury in the ground, the more potential production there is. Uh, which means that this right here is not a good planting piece because see how far apart these are? Not, not as good. You can even get pieces where the nodes are that far apart. What we want is one where the nodes are, are nice and bundled up. This is not, and they can actually be even better than this, but this, this is pretty good. Very soft tissue. So I like to count 10 nodes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. I'm not too precise, it could be a little more or less. So this is a nice cutting. Big pieces like this can be stored indoors for up to four or five months without rotting, which is really, so before a freeze comes, say in December, all these cuttings go into a shed, I bring them back out, and March 1st is when I put these in, at about, you know, like this. I'll cut away, if they've been in storage, I'll cut away the dried up bad stuff, and I'm after this kind of healthy tissue. You can tell if it's still alive by scratching, and you'll see green underneath, if it's a viable cutting. Um, so I, what I do when I plant, this might not work too well, because the ground might be kind of dry, but I use this old, uh, Carnival, let me see if I can find a wetter spot to do this on. No. I use this nail. See, the soil's collapsing really bad. If the soil's wet, that hole will stay open. And I jab it in at a 45 degree angle. And uh, you wanna make sure this is upright. The, the bud is always above the leaf scar. And then this goes in there. See, that totally didn't work because it's too dry. But anyway, this would go in the ground with three nodes above. So I would bury this all the way to here. Sometimes I will actually, just to show here what it should look like. About like that, just like that. And then it needs to be watered, weeded around, everything like that for while well, it's getting going. I've got some over there I could show you that are a few weeks in. So that's cool. how that's done. So let's uh, go ahead and pull this guy up. So you gotta be careful doing this because you can actually hurt your back. They're really in the ground. And if I used a cutting where the nodes are really far apart, what I'm doing is I'm planting roots a foot down in the ground or even further. And then the roots are really deep down and they're very hard to harvest. But they're less prone to blowing over. So it's kind of a give and take, but I don't want to hurt my back or anything. Um, and it, if you have them too deep in the ground, you'll snap them off and you have to get a shovel and dig them out, which we don't want to do. So the technique for digging these out is this slow process. The bigger the yield, the harder they are to harvest. This one I left here for the video because it had nice fat stems, which means it's got a nice big plant. So, it's a rocking back and forth. It takes a lot of strength. In fact, some people wouldn't be able to do this. They're gonna have to dig them out one by one. And this one, I'm actually concerned I can't get out. Sometimes, I may have to actually cut some of these off. When you harvest, if you cut, you want to right at the top. The biggest weakness of cassava is that it rots very easily. So uh, the, the less damage you do to the skin, the better. Josh, what are some of the other common names for this one that... Uh... Yucca is Spanish. Um, Portuguese, I think it's something along the lines of uh, manioc, manioca. And a lot of languages, it's something like Manioc. I mean, this is what they make um, tapioca, tapioca from. Tapioca okay. is a common name. And this is how most Americans have probably eaten it. Gosh, this is a big one. This is this how you get your workout, Josh? Farm strong? Yeah, too much. <laughs> there we go. I heard it. Yeah, so what you, you don't want to hear a loud abrupt cracks or you're leaving behind roots. I 
I have seen in some countries they have tools for this. Really? It's like a big lever that attaches here to save yourself from uh, oh, to get leverage on it and kind doing of what I'm it. doing. If you're a laborer pulling these out on a field, you're not going to survive this too long. It's incredible how much it can yield in such a relatively short amount of time. And they're about twice as dense in calories as potatoes. So there's really a lot of food here. It's a nice one. Wow, twice the caloric intake. Yeah. Okay. That's a pretty good yield. We could weigh it, but I've gotten as much as 25 pounds from one plant. This small stuff, just go to the pigs. So the best variety we grow out here is called Togo from Togo, West Africa. This is not that one. This one takes nearly 10 or 11 months. The Togo takes eight months, so we really like that. So, I lost half of this one. You can tell it's freshly snapped. So somewhere in the ground there, there's a couple hundred more calories. I'm not gonna bother. So this is a newer planting of cassava. Um, there's plant here, here, by June, we expect them to be here, and then by end of the year, taller than me, um, we could start harvesting the, this variety as early as November 1st, but really the heart of the season is in uh, December. And we will pull most of this out, and then it needs to be fermented, turned into flour, or frozen, or preserved, or something, because it, it only lasts for a few days once it's out of the ground. Um, this is a, a, a trial here of a bunch of different species and varieties of beans as an intercrop with the cassava um, to see if we can get a, an additional crop, fix nitrogen, and choke out weeds. Um, so there's lima beans, true beans, tepary beans, and cowpea. The cowpea here is really doing its job. Um, so the cassava is right here, but this cowpea is completely choking out around it. Now I do need to keep my eye on this if these start kind of getting on it I'll have to cut them or pull them off of the plant but right now this is a pretty good cooperation situation going on here and the first of the cow peas are starting to come on by the time this canopy starts to get bigger the peas will get mowed down or just get shaded out and uh, the cassava will ultimately the canopy of these plants will totally touch and you can come take a nap under this in the fall it completely shades the ground so what I like is that it leaves the ground in a place where there's relatively few weeds for the next year. So we rotate cassava back and forth on these plots. This year over here, pumpkins and yams, and cassava over here, and then we'll rotate back and forth. Um, we could get 15 pounds on each of these plants. You know, it adds up wow. to quite a bit of produce. And Josh, you mentioned a really short shelf life. What's going on with the stuff in the grocery store? It's dunked in a wax. So I, I don't know much about that. It might just be a harmless like paraben wax or something. But uh, even with that wax, it doesn't last very long. The other root crops all last. Sweet potato taro and um, yam all last a really long time. In, a, in hot weather, you can start to see a rotting going through cassava root in just like three days. It's, really unfortunate aspect of it because it's such an important food for so many people around the world.